Hi, it's Squat. In this video, I want to tell you about the VDJ recombination. Here is an alpha protein. Here is a beta protein. That's the CD3. With other proteins together, this is a T cell receptor. And alpha protein has C part, V part, J part. Beta protein also has its own C part, V. D, J. Alpha protein comes from alpha gene, which is on chromosome 14. Beta protein comes from beta gene, which is on chromosome 7. If you look at that alpha gene region on chromosome 14, there will be one C region and uh, many V region and many J regions and each three prime end of the V region has a special sequence made with the three parts seven nucleotides 23 nucleotides nine nucleotides and this small sequence is the recombination signaling sequence one and all of the V's will have that. Each J region's five prime end has similar sequence made with seven ma, twelve ma, and nine ma, a small piece of DNA, and this is recombination signaling sequence two. And when a stem cell commits to become a T cell, VDJ recombination proteins, especially RAG1 and RAG2 will be expressed and RAG1 will go and pick a random recombination signaling sequence 1 to sit on and RAG2 will go and pick a random recombination signaling sequence 2 to sit on. And suppose RAG1 sits right here and RAG2 sits right here. RAG1 picked V2, RAG2 picked J2. Then RAG1 and RAG2 will come together. So here is the chromosome 14, V1, V2. And if RAG1 and RAG2 come together, you will have J1, J2, all the way to Jn all the way to Vn. This is the RSS1. This is the RSS2. RAG1 is sitting on RSS1. RAG2 is sitting on RSS2. And they are together. RAG1 will cut next to this 7ma. RAG2 will also cut next to this 7ma, resulting in this cut and this cut. And after the cut, there will be three pieces since DNA is double stranded I'm going to start drawing the second strand RAG1 and RAG2 go away and this end will become a covalent bond between the last two nucleotides the last nucleotide here and here will bind without adding anything new in between and a cell will Think of this as a DNA breakage, so kickstart the non homologous end joining repair process uh, using proteins like uh, Ku, BRCA1, 2, etc., to try to fix that damage. And this non homologous end joining repair process is what connects the V2 and J2, replacing that temporary covalent bond with a uh, actual piece of a uh, glue sequence a non homologous end joint repair process will also glue these sequence with uh, gluing sequences resulting in a circular piece of DNA called the SJ T rec and this circular DNA is uh, stable and people can measure 
the amount of SJT rec to quantify the VDJ recombination process. And this gluing sequence also adds a diversity to the final receptor protein. Here is V2 right after the cut. Here is J2 right after the cut. What happens next is a protein called the Artemis try to cut this covalent bond and this covalent bond to open the cut so that gluing can take place. But the Artemis will cut a little bit off the covalent bond. So when the cut is done, one strand is longer than the other strand. If the Artemis missed the covalent bond by three nucleotides, and if this part is A, C, and G, then the pair would be T, G, and C. Then this longer strand would be T, G, C, G, C, A. And if the Artemis missed this side by two nucleotides, and if this was CC, then the pairing would be GG. Then when the Artemis cut opens, the sequence here would be CC, GG. Now the Artemis opened that temporary covalent bond. Terminal deoxynucleotide transferase would come in and add some random sequence. Let's add A and C here, and let's add uh, T and T there. And filling the gap, A, C, G, C, G, T, uh, T, G. The other end would be uh, G, G, C, C, A, A. So this is connected, and this is connected now. And then the sequence, the Artemis opened, A, C, G, C, G, T, pairing resulting palindromic sequence, A, C, G, C, G, T. This opening was C, C, G, G, C, C, G, G, and it paired with C, C, G, G. And in the middle, you have random nucleotides needed to glue the two sequences. In summary, the gluing add two palindromic sequences and also a random sequence in the middle. And let's not forget, here is V2, here is J2. If you have 20 V and 40 J available, there can be 800 different combinations of a V and J, but even greater source of potential diversity comes from this random gluing sequence, significantly increasing the potential number of proteins with the recombination can make. So in this example, RAG1 picked V2, RAG2 picked J2, and here is that random gluing sequence. And all the way here is the constant region, and this piece of DNA will end up making the cDNA and, and mRNA. Finally, a protein alpha. Beta protein goes through the same process, but instead of being on chromosome 14, it's on chromosome 7. Uh, here is a C region. Here is a V region. That's V1 all the way to Vn. And the beta protein uses also D region. So here's D1, and D1 sandwiches J's, J1 to J6. Here's D2, J7 to J12, so forth. And this combination of a D and few J is a cassette. And in the beta protein VGD recombination, first, D will join with a J, of course, using a random gluing sequence. And then the product here will go on and bind with a V, of course, using a random gluing sequence. There is also that constant region. And altogether, a chosen D and J and V combine with the C to make the CDNA, which will become the unique beta. 
protein. This VDJ recombination takes place only once per cell. That's why each cell will have a unique T cell receptor. Beta proteins is made first and then the alpha protein. Cells also make other proteins like CD3 and all of these will eventually come together creating one unique T cell receptor. And each B cell also goes through the VDJ recombination only once to create a unique B cell receptor. When a lymphocyte successfully makes its first and then the only unique receptor, then the proteins used during this process, especially RAG1 and RAG2, will be churned off.